One of the first things that I thought we would cover is the actual process when the analog to digital converter is converting the audio from an electrical signal into a digital representation of that signal. And so we see that graphically as a waveform. So let's check out waveforms. If I zoom in here, on any particular instrument, you can see that it's represented by a waveform. You can see the strong transient on the snare drum, on the bass drums. Okay, so they're real easy to see. You can see the guitar parts. You can see the waveforms. So what do these individual waveforms represent? Okay, they really represent a couple of different things. And we're going to talk about those right now. So if I'm going to diagram a waveform, let's draw a line across here. And here is my waveform. There's some specific information that these waveforms tell us about this audio signal. The first one we're going to discuss is information we learn by measuring this here, this distance from there to there. First thing you need to know is that this is one complete cycle of the waveform. It goes all the way up and all the way back and meets back at this center line. That's one complete cycle. Now, if we take and we measure how many cycles per second this waveform actually creates, that can tell us essentially the frequency of that waveform. We as humans hear frequency as pitch. So if we know the frequency of a waveform, we'll essentially know what pitch it is. Now, there's a way that we measure pitch. We measure pitch in cycles per second. Or CPS. And another term that we'll hear used is hertz. So hertz is the exact same thing as cycles per second. Hertz tells us how many cycles per second a waveform is cycling. This distance from here to here is one complete cycle. If we have a drawing then, like this, where this represents one second of time, how many cycles per second does this waveform contain? And the answer is we measure each full cycle. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cycles. Eight cycles per second or eight hertz. One and the same thing, cycles per second or hertz. We perceive that eight cycles per second then, it's, we perceive it as pitch. We perceive frequency as pitch. Okay, so if we had a, a note that we were familiar with, like A, all orchestras tune to an A, and they tune to a certain frequency of A. They turn tune to A440. So that 440 is how many cycles per second, or how many hertz. So let me ask you a question here. If we were going to play the A note that is an octave higher than A440, let's say this is A440. Bum, and we want to play this note. Bum, okay, that's A, but an octave higher. How many cycles per second do you think that would be? Well, if we're doubling the pitch, we are also doubling the frequency or the amount of cycles per second. So the next highest A is 880. 
after that, same thing. If we go up another octave higher, bum, bum, beep. Okay, so now that's what, 760? I don't know, my math's not that good. So a, a jump in an octave or a jump in one octave in pitch from one note to the next will double our hertz or our cycles per second. Okay, so let's review this real quick. We perceive or we hear frequency and we perceive it as pitch. We measure our pitch in cycles per second or hertz. That measures this area horizontally across this axis from one cycle to the next. That's what we're measuring along this horizontal line. So a question might be then, what information does this distance contain? This distance measures what we call amplitude. We perceive amplitude as volume or loudness. And then we also have a unit of measurement, and that is called decibels. It also has an abbreviation that's oftentimes used, dB. So the distance vertically from the center line to the highest point on the waveform vertically gives us our amplitude that we perceive as volume and it's measured in decibels. The distance horizontally from one, uh, for one complete wave measures the frequency, we perceive it as pitch, and its unit of measurement is cycles per second or hertz. By viewing any waveform, you can tell A, is it a loud waveform, B, is it high pitched or low pitched. Let's go back and look at our Pro Tools session. Okay, let's look at this waveform right here. A, is it loud? B, is it high or low pitch? Well, it looks fairly strong. It weakens as you further goes further along. That's a fairly loud waveform. And it also is fairly slow in moving in its cycles, in its cycles per second. We can compare that with, say, this guitar note. You can see how much closer these cycles per second are, or how many more cycles there are per second with these notes than there are for these notes. That's because this is a bass drum. It's a much lower pitch. Okay, and that's a low bass drum, as opposed to maybe a guitar signal. We measure pitch or frequency along the horizontal axis, and it's measured in cycles per second or hertz. We measure the distance vertically from the center line to the highest point on the waveform. We measure that on the vertical axis, and we are measuring the volume or amplitude, and we are measuring it using the measurement called decibels. Okay, the next thing we're going to discuss will be how our analog to digital converter actually takes measurements and makes a digital representation of our analog waveform in order to convert it into a digital signal.